So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with the recovering Democrat, I should say that way, uh, Donovan Sadiq. And this is the Demetra K Show and Podcast, where we promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we believe that we are great, but we can always be greater, always room for improvement, right? And so um, it is Tuesday, March 1st, and this year is going by fast, right? I'm still in the habit of writing 2021, and I'm like, no, it's 2022. So anyway, today we are going to be talking about that of Asia Maynard. You guys may or may not have heard about her situation. Uh, it's um, the young lady that's in a photo behind me. Um, it was the photo. Um, I didn't cut it off per se. It's just kind of how it was um, next to the person I'm going to talk about. Anyway, her, her situation is a very sad one, but it's becoming very common. But we're going to get into that in just a few. Donovan, what say you? Hey, well, again, it's March 1st. Happy Mardi Gras to those guys down in the South that are celebrating that. Isn't it funny that they got the election on Mardi Gras? It happens in some election cycles have uh, fell on Mardi Gras, and which means maybe a lot of black folks are going to be too partied out to go vote. So, you know, maybe I don't know. So uh, if you got some beads and if you got enough beads, show me your anyway. But uh, <laughs> I know. Hey, uh, do us a favor. Please like, share and subscribe, even become a member. And if you so are willing, we've got Cash App, Venmo. Uh, and all these other applications you can go to. And then you can listen to Demetra K's podcast on all of the podcast uh, speakers, Podbean, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeart, and what's the other new one? There's another one I keep forgetting about, but uh, you guys can check us out there. Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So um, on February 18th, a young lady, as the, um, the one behind me by the name of Asia, Maynard, uh, she is a mother of four, 29 year old. Well, she was, I should say, mother of four. Um, went out on a date with this guy here. His name is Isaiah Crown. Went out on a date with him, and it sounds like she had just met him. And her sister said the following in regards to what she knows of what happened. So she says, she and her sister name is Tara. She called me Friday at 10 30 or 11 and said, Hey, I met a new friend. I'm going on a date. I'll be home by tomorrow. Okay. So this was the 18th. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And so she says that, you know, from that point, they never heard from her again and never heard from Asia again. So after Friday, she called, she never showed up and that's not like her. So another day goes by. I said, something's not right. It's not sitting right with my spirit. Now this is her sister saying this. So it says, uh, Tara told the news outlet that she called the police to file a missing persons report, but was told that Asia was probably fine and they would reach back out. Only Tara would soon learn that the authorities already knew about Asia's death and they were mm -hmm. never contacted. So she says, Saturday morning, they found my sister deceased. And so they, um, what happened was the guy that she went on a date with Isaiah Crown here, um, Yes, he reported her dead. And so it sounds like she had died on the 19th. So they went on a date or whatever. She went to his house, rather. She went to his house on the 18th and um, reported her dead on the 19th because that's the, what they have is her date of death. And then, of course, her family found out about on the 20th. Now, okay, now her family was told that, you know, from the authorities, there doesn't seem to be any foul play involved. Okay, there's no foul play involved. And this was the next day. Well, yeah, when they when they talked to the, you know, yeah, the, the family, family. when they found out that, you know, her sister was deceased, they told her there's no, well, it doesn't seem like there's any, you know, uh, foul play for what we could see right now, you know. But the sister said when they went to the uh, mortuary, the coroner's office, wherever it was, yeah. that the sister's eyes were full of blood, her ears was full of blood, and her clothes were drenched in blood. Now, they also said that it appears that she died of natural causes. Now, to just hearing that, most of us, us would think, well, what kind of natural cause would cause a 20? And their family said that she didn't have any history of drug use. Um, she was healthy, no ailments or anything like that. And so it would cause you to think, what natural cause would have you doing all of that, be found bloodied, right? 
And so as you guys can see here, um, Isaiah Crown appears to be a Caucasian man, a zaddy, as some people would call him. Um, and it also sounds like that he's had some other issues. And I don't want to really get into it because right now it seems like it's hearsay. But he's had some other issues with, um, allegedly, I'll say, with drugs and drugging people. Mm -hmm. um, but none of that's really, you know, uh, confirmed. So I'll just put that, leave it at that. But anyway, as you can see, he's, you know, he's a white man and, you know, he, she's a sister that's gone out with this white man and has turned up dead, pardon the expression, you know, turned up dead, you know, and again, we've heard this before. Most recently was that of Lauren Smith Field in Connecticut, another mm -hmm. sister that went out with a white man. And for some reason, she was, you know, uh, bloodied in his bed. They said that, uh, well, actually, I think it was her bed. So they... Um, when the family went to the house and they said the crime scene wasn't secure or anything like that, there was a big giant blood stain in the middle of the bed, but they were told that she had a bloody nose. The, the guy she was with was a white man too. He said her nose, she had a nose bleed and that's where the blood came from. But her family's like, wait a minute, how, how, how does a nose bleed right. lose all of that blood? And so in her situation as well, they ruled it, you know, uh, a, a accidental death or, you know, no, no foul play involved. Let's just say that. And so there's another white man that was with a sister that has gotten off the hook, per se. The authorities are like, well, seems like it was natural causes and you guys have a nice life. And so the family also, in this case, wants a different investigation. Now, the authorities there are saying it's not a homicide investigation. It is a death investigation. So they basically... Want to, they want to delve into it. Categorize that they can categorize what kind of investigation it is, right? Yeah, so they want to see, you know, how she died, but they're saying we don't see any foul play, and it doesn't appear to be a homicide. But it's like, well, I mean, you guys might want to do a little bit more work because it doesn't seem right. Right, because you know, uh, and I used and I I brought that up some fact like Breonna Taylor. This girl was murdered, but it's not classified as a homicide. Yeah. Right, right. So. You know, we're going to have a conversation in regards to that and, you know, this whole and I know some people will probably get mad and I'm not trying to be offensive. But, you know, so I, I mean, I'm just not again, I'm not trying to make people mad, but I do want to be able to speak in my honesty um, in regards to what is going on here. But, you know, there's this big thing, I guess, and it's new to me called the divesters or black women are divesting from black men and. I, I don't know if this particular sister was a divester per se, but, you know, I, I just think as loudly as the divesters talk about how, you know, bad black men are and horrible people they are, I think they need to speak up a little bit more loudly in regards to these white men doing horrible things to the sisters. Because I will say this, y'all, okay? Any divesters are listening, I see some of y'all peek in and out every once in a while, y'all have some stuff standing in y'all bounce. But one thing I would say about the brothers that harm sisters, they get in trouble. They don't have the police show up and say, well, you know, ma'am, it seems like it was an accident. You know, we don't see any foul play that that brother goes to jail and probably for life. Right. But the thing about y'all dating these the white men, the white men don't even get a slap on the wrist. They get, well, you know, what can we do? You know, he called us and said it was an accident. So yeah. the white men are getting away with murdering y'all. So y'all can't tell me that there's th these things are the same because they're not. You, you know, you brought up a, a good point when it comes to these divestors and, you know, to each his own. You, you like what you like. You do what you do. You know, have at it. But I keep hearing about from these divestors how terrible black men are and all this other stuff. Why is it that women think that they're perfect? You know, yeah, you know, you, you know, you know what I mean? In a relationship, how is everything on the dude? Okay, so if you're a divester, if you become a divester, in all of your relationships, the common denominator is you. So if your relationships, I don't care if you dated a Hispanic man, an Asian man, whatever, and then you decide to become a divester, which is, you know, you could do that too. The common den denominator would be you in that situation. So it's like, you're putting the onus like all black men ain't nothing and it's all bad. Because what do I tell you all the time, Demetra? For me to stop dating black women, I would literally have to date every black woman on the planet, then come to the conclusion that black women are not for me. Right. 
You know what I mean? But but in, but in regards to this young lady, and this case kind of reminds me, how many of you guys remember uh, that Vandersloop guy? Yeah. Who was murdering people. He, mm-hmm. he, I think he's down in Lima, Peru right now in a prison down there yeah. still. He was the- Natalie uh, Holloway. He, yeah, the N- Natalie Holloway crime. And then he murdered some other chick. And, you know, because he's a white, you know, white guy, you know, they just let, you know, it's crazy how much privilege these people have. But you said that this young lady had four children. Four children, 29 years old. Okay. I just have a question. If you have four children, and I'm not saying whatever, but I just have, you know, as an uncle and a, a, you know, a father myself, you have four children. When do you have time? And I'm not saying you don't have time to go out, but when do you have time to go out on a date overnight? So whoever was keeping her children, I'm just saying, wouldn't that have plugged something in their mind? Like, look, you know, you just met somebody, it seems from from your narrative that she had just met some guy and they're going to go out on a date. Okay, maybe she got killed or whatever. But I'm just saying, you know, when you have four children, you just had one. How, how, How much time did you ever have to just up and go on a date? Well, yeah. And so that's part of the conversation I want to have. Yeah. I mean, again, and you know, I, I don't want to. Shame. Yeah. I'm not slamming the situation. I'm no, just no, no, saying, no, no. Yeah. we're not shaming the dead yeah. or anything like that, but yeah. I just think we'd be remiss not to have the total conversation, but you know, I see a lot of people and that's what I was just looking at. A lot of people posting about, you know, um, here's another white man that's killed a sister and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. RIP this, that, and the other, and, 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 and rightfully so, there should be a rest in peace uh, rendered there. But I think we need to have a deeper conversation, and it is a problem. I think that if you're 29 years old, and again, no judgment, I was a mother at 21, I have one child, um, but you got four kids, and you're 29, and you out there dating, and it's somebody you sound like she's never met before. My thing is, why are you out there dating you know, and somebody and going to his house, like, I, I, ladies, ladies, ladies. I haven't been on a date in a very long time, okay? But I will tell you what, if I did, I would not be meeting some dude at his house, some dude that I've never met a day in my life. I don't know anything about him at all, right? And I get it. You know, sometimes you get hot and bothered and, you know, the texting is going good and you want to listen, bruh, I, later for all of that, I need to meet you at a Starbucks. I need to meet you at a library. Now, I'm dating myself now, but I need to meet you somewhere publicly. So that yeah. way, if you are some sadistic fool about the suburb mm-hmm. that came from the Mac RIP, <laughs> you some sadistic fool out the suburbs want to break my arm, then you're going to have to break my arm in front of everybody here at Starbucks or wherever we are, right? But Donovan, you brought up a good point. And I'm going to get back to her, you know, being 29 years old, four kids in a little bit. But you brought up a good point when we were speaking earlier. And it's like, why are these sisters? And this is your opinion. So I want you to talk about it. You're saying that the sisters seem like they're more willing to go meet a strange white dude dude than a brother. they would a black man. So tell me your opinion about that. Well, you know, to me, it isn't really my opinion. It's just what I'm actually seeing. It's like, why do why do they feel? And I'm not trying to stereotype, please, you guys, we're not all encompassing here. You guys kind of follow me what I'm trying to say here. Why is it that these young ladies feel safer going to meet a white man when they wouldn't do the exact same thing for a black man? Is it because of the media and stuff tells tells them that, oh, black men are dangerous and this, this, that. And if they're doing that, and I'm very sure they've been taught by their mothers, hopefully, any man that you meet for the first time, like you said, you don't just go do this and go to do that unless you're a 304 and you're, you know, you're doing what you, you need to do out there. But it, it just boggles my mind because as an uncle, I tell my nieces you know, no, you don't do this. You don't do that. You don't, I mean, it's almost like common knowledge, but if you are, wouldn't, aren't you supposed to be safer with your own before you're with the others? What you're supposed to be. And so, you know, I mean, I don't know how true it is that black women feel more comfortable with white men. I I don't know. And I'm not saying what you're saying is off. I just don't have any data to back that up. Mm -hmm. 
But if let's just assume that that is the case. Okay. We know that we as black people have been conditioned, trained to think that if it's white, it's all right. All right. You know? And so I, ooh, I'm trying to be careful <laughs> because I know I don't, I'm just going to put a speculation out there that there's a lot of sisters who are enamored by white men. Ooh, is a white man. Oh, child. Look at, ooh, you know, is his blue eyes. I, I've heard it. So there's a lot of white black women who are just taken aback by these white men. And so, yeah, they feel like, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Wait, he, wait, we have a friend that, that loves Joe Biden. She thought he's, ooh, he's so handsome. <laughs> um, They just probably feel that like he's safe and, you know, it's, he's not going to, he's harmless and all of that. And it's like, y'all ain't heard of Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, well, you know, in the opinion of a lot of women that he kick up kick, with his cast on his his arm, um, they, most people who, and the women and stuff who got away was like, he was so handsome. And that's how he yeah, was educated, woo, you know, very smooth yeah. moving guy. Mm -hmm. He was able to woo these women. And so it's like, I mean, well, uh, Wayne Gacy, most of your serial killers, a majority of your serial killers are white men. It's it, it's very rare that a black person is a serial killer. It's very rare. And that's why I would joke with my white friends like I should be petrified of you right now. You know what I mean? When I'm hanging with them, you know? Yeah. But I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I don't know if that's the assessment that they're they're doing when they're dating these white guys. And I'm oh, listening. Wait, white wait, people wait. But, but wait a minute, Demetria. I mean, we have friends that are married to uh, white men. I have a, a bunch of friends that are inter interracial. And that's what I was going to say. I'm married. not trying to say that all white men are like yeah. Ted Bundy. Like, I'm not saying but, that at all. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm going to say is this, you know, uh, you're right. A lot of my friends that are interracially married, especially the black women that marry white men that are friends of mine, a lot of them have told me that they they're under the impression that it's it's dating up. It's better for them. You know, oh, this guy has money or this guy is more stable or this person's this or, you know, the brothers ain't doing this, whatever. They, they've actually said that. And, you know, and I'm like, well, I think you're wrong, but to each to each his own. Well, and also, you know, we just did a uh, podcast, I think it was Saturday, was talking about how they came, they being the divesters and, you know, whatever they want to call themselves. We're mad at Tina uh, Knowles Lawson yes. for making yeah. the, the, you know, the documentary Uplifting the Black Man. But it's like, why y'all ain't as loud about these white men killing these sisters? Why mm -hmm. aren't y'all just as loud? Like, I, I mean, I've seen a few kind of make a bleep, but not all mm -hmm. the... The, the the vigor that they had for Tina Knowles, you know, and her lifting up black men. And so it's like, I think at some point in time, we, or I should say they, are going to have to admit that there is a problem here. And my thing is this, that with these white men killing the sisters, clearly, well, I'll say clearly, let's just say more than likely, the police are showing up to these scenes and the white man is like, oh my God, you know, this happened. <laughs> I didn't know we got a little too crazy and I can almost hear the police officer saying, well, don't worry about it. If it was an accident, because in, in Lauren Smith Fields case, they told her family that the guy would seem like a nice guy. Nice guy. And he's nice still, guy. you know, footloose and fancy free. And so I'm thinking these uh, officers or whoever is showing up at the scene is like, OK, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. If it was an accident, we believe you, especially when they see that as a black woman in the bed now. Imagine if that was a black man calling the police to say that it was a dead white woman in his bed. That you can bet a dollar to a donut, the situation would be completely different. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and in that case with the young lady up in Connecticut, why wasn't it in the police report that a condom was found and obviously some sexual activity probably took place? We don't know when, but you know, a lot of things were omitted and you know, they're finding, it's no secret in the black community that police falsify reports. We all know that. Even though white people are like, what? The police? Oh my God. Uh, no, you know, so. Uh, I, I just think people need to really just understand the gravity of yeah. these cases and that they're dismissing it as uh, accidental or, you know, no foul play involved. It's not homicide, but it's like, how do you explain all the blood? Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 see, and my thing is this: recently, Marjorie Taylor Greene she went to a white supremacist rally, and 
I'm looking at everything that is happening in the new black media, yourself and other bl black platforms. Or it's like we're ringing this alarm, letting these people know that these white and you know, I'm not trying to, you know, say this, but, but let's say it what it is. These white supremacist organizations are wreaking havoc. And would it be too far fetched to think that they're out here murdering? and getting away with it because there has been a report that a lot of your police departments across the nation are infiltrated, this is the FBI report, are infiltrated by white supremacists. Or actually the police was infil had infiltrated the white supremacists because yeah. right, right. they yeah. started first, yeah. the KKK. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, and, and I just want to touch on this for our, our listeners and stuff like this. When you go and want to report a loved one missing, do not let the police tell you, oh, give it some time or she's probably all of this or that, that. No, you get the report right. There is no time limit. Stop believing that. If you believe the loved one's missing, you do that report right then and there. And, and, and if the guy keeps trying to shoo you away, ask for a supervisor, so on, so on, so forth. We watch too many damn movies where the guy goes, come back in 24 hours and then, you know, we'll see what happens, whatever. No, you can take the report right then and there. You're the taxpayer. You're the boss. Make them do their jobs. Because in that 24 hours that he shoes you away, Demetra, couldn't that be the difference between life and death? Yeah, I mean, especially when you know your family member. Like, we got some people we know, like, ah, you know, it's not unusual for them to just take off and be gone, right? Right. But there's some people like, nah, because at this time of day, they would have been here, they would have been there, right. they would have been doing this and all of that. So this is unusual for them to come up missing, per se. Especially a woman that has four children. Right. And so, you know, like I said, I, I just think that the divesting community or the sisters who want to get away from black men so bad. And listen, I, I can't judge you. I'm sure you have your reasons for whatever reason. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I can't tell you your reason is wrong. Right. So I don't want to get into that. But I think y'all need to start having a conversation that going off with Brad and them ain't that much better because just like black women accuse Black men are being, you know, are, are accused or say white women only want to be with black men because they're fetish. The same thing is true for them. The, the white exactly. men want to be with the sisters because they're exactly. fetish too. And my thing is this. Again, listen, I'm not judging nobody, but you're 29 years old. You got four children yeah. and you out there. Like, why are you out there? Was he a potential suitor for you and the father of the kids? Like, were you on that or were you just going to get your, you know, your kicks up or what? Like, what was that about? I guess we'll never really know. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I'm sad for her children because their mom, and listen, I'm not trying to disrespect the dad, but their mom didn't um, think enough of them to say, while I probably haven't been out on a date in a while or whatever's going on, I'm not going to uh, put my children in the, in, in um, uh, in a way to where they would be without their mom, right? Like there has to be some critical thinking going on here. Okay, I'm going out with a guy I've never met before and I'm going to his house. Doesn't sound like too many people knew where she was. Her sister right. knew she was going on a date, but doesn't sound like she knew where she was because she was like, hey, we haven't heard from her, right? Because I would think they would have went over there if they knew. But what happened to the point where girls and women would just say, listen, girl, I'm going out with Bob. And this is Bob's name, his social security number, his mama name, well, where he lived, his license plate, and well, all of that. Well, Demetri, when you were out here in California, you used to have the lie detector test thing all set up in your computer and put the, the guy thing on the finger, ask for his uh, credit background. Oh, you used to do all of that. No, no, but in joking, you know what I mean? You're right. What happened to all of that? And then, you know, this goes back, and I got I to gotta defend Black men because I'm one of them. This goes back to the, the trope totally untrue about black men not defending black women. How the hell can we defend you if we don't know who you're dating, what's going on and, you know, and where it's going on? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a good point, but I don't know. And, you know, I don't know who watched the children, but I don't know. I, like I said, I had one child and I, I didn't get to go out a whole lot. You know, I didn't have the type of mama that would have left, you know, watch my child, but I couldn't imagine Somebody being able to drop four children off and that mm -hmm. not like, listen, just listen to the insanity in this. Yes. Okay, this is insane to me. Maybe because I'm older, right? I'm 50. Okay, you can see the gray hair. Maybe because I'm older, but this is insanity to me, right? 
who agrees to watch for wherever the kids were. I don't know. Maybe they were the dad. I don't know. Daddies. Who, <laughs> I, I don't know right. what the lady's situation right. was with the daddy, right. the daddies, whoever. But who agrees to watch four babies mm. without knowing where this woman going? Right. Exactly. Like, if something happened. Back, I need a little bit more information that I'll be back. I'm just going on a date. Okay, yeah, that's great. But I need to know who you're going with, where you're going, what time you're coming back. Is it some contact information? Because there is some responsibility to that. And other than you just like, if, even if you're seeing my mom, this one thing, God rest my mama. One thing she always says, she goes, I don't care how old you are. You better let somebody know where the hell you are at all times. Because if you come up missing, Nobody will even know how to where to start. Now, remember, this was before cell phones and yeah. all of yeah. that. So let's I mean, that was know basic where knowledge. At. Yeah, that was basic knowledge. I mean, you know, um, you know, I call my mom as much as I can just to make sure. And right now, I know she's down in in, in New Roads <laughs> during the Mardi Gras parade, doing whatever she's doing with her with her family and stuff. <laughs> yeah, she's getting the beads, getting the beads, and doing all you know whatever they're doing. You know, she's probably down there doing doing her thing. But you know what I mean. But but even now that that my mom is a little bit more at a senior age, you know, advanced age, I still chuck up on her just so I know where she's at and what she's doing. Like a, another good example, you guys. Um, you know, if, if you can put and you have a single parent or whatever, put a um, tracker on their phone. You know, Google Maps, where their location finder. That way you can kind of just see you know where they're at because we have a lot of our old our older black women that are single. They don't have a man in the home and all that other stuff. And, you know, it's just one way that I, I just get tired of, of hearing grandma's been in the, uh, on the floor for three or four days before they got her. God forbid, you know, she survived it, but it's just the fact that these seniors will fall and something will happen and nobody checks up on grandma. But see the other part that I'm having too, Donovan, because yeah, mm -hmm. you know, before we had the ability to track Do people all and all mm -hmm. of that, and even common sense, to tell people where you are. Mm -hmm. Listen, Ma, can you watch my daughter? This night I'm going out on a date with Bob. He's a nice guy. I met him, whatever. But this is his information. We're going to be at the Snooty Fox. I'm just kidding, y'all. Yeah. Y'all y'all know who Snooty Fox is? Yes, I'm just kidding. Exactly. We're going to be out dining or whatever. Now time for yeah. <laughs> I will be back at 1030. Can right. You had a time limit. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're giving people that you like, but we, but this is the thing. So maybe if you ain't trying to tell people what you're doing, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Well, here's another thing too. How about this? Let's think about this. Look at what the the these young girls are telling each other. Get the bag. You know, you got these Britney Renners out here, and I'm not mad at them for doing what they do. But what I'm saying is, look at the messaging that is out there to these young black women. Get the bag at any cost. Have a baby with anybody just so you can get the bag. Um, you know, look a certain way. You got to have weed. You got to go do the 304 lifestyle. You know, all this stuff, the Megan the Stallions, the Cardi B's, uh, all of the, you know, I, I think that has a, 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 a part of the reason in the programming of some of these young ladies that would make a decision like that. If I had, I'm trying to figure out as a man, how can you have four children? and be able to go on a date. You had one. I have two children. And when they were growing up, I rarely went on a date because I had a, a part-time job to get to so I could support those children. Well, I would say this, it's, you know, it's nothing new that black girls and women, you know, and it, like I said, a lot of black people are missing, but sure. specifically we're talking about black girls and women. Not a secret that they're missing because it is said that it's over 64,000 black women yeah. and girls that are missing and so we're, I think we're just hearing more about it now because of the internet and new all black of media. that. But this mm -hmm. is not, it's not new that somebody will go on a date and not tell somebody where they're going on. Right. So this is not, this is not new. And I will say in all fairness that I was never taught to go have a baby on a dude, you know, and just that. And the other. So yeah. I was well, I'm talking about the younger girls. Yeah. yeah I, but I, I guess I kind of want to just kind of walk that back a little bit yeah. because I don't think that's necessarily being taught maybe to some. And maybe no, 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 no. middle, but yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think it's being taught overall. Like no, 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 but no. What I'm saying is the messaging in the culture. Look at the music. Look at what right. they're seeing. Look at the propaganda. I ain't saying it's being taught in the home. That ain't what I'm saying. Right. But this is the thing, though. You mean you talk about this a lot. OK. Mm -hmm. I have a 29 year old child, daughter. I should say young woman. OK. Young woman. Yes. Hot. And... Hot. Go ahead. <laughs> 
not no Megan the Stallion, Cardi B, the City Girls. None of them are going to be more influential in the life of my daughter than me. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the problem that yeah. when these people, these girls are so influenced by the lifestyle, you say the hot girls and the city girl and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. And, and, you know, to some people it may seem fun. And I guess on the surface it is. Sure. But when you start thinking that's how you need to operate on every realm, I'm chasing the bag, I'm getting mm -hmm. over on dudes and, you know, F these, you know, all this, that, and the other, and he has a problem. But as mothers, we should be more influential in the lives of our daughters than any outside force. Like, when did we as women stop teaching? Because to me, like I said, I'm 50. I'm not that old in, the, in, a, in, a, in a larger scheme of things, right? You're I, middle aged. I guess, I guess so, right? Yes. But the point that I'm making is, like, I remember getting that good advice from my mom and my grandma and the older women. There was just certain things you didn't do as young women. Like, one of the things my mom was like, shit, don't you, and my, and my daughter would tell you, my mom told her the same thing. Don't you ever go out with no with a man with no money in your no pocket, in and, pocket right. and without a way home. I have a dime. Now, that's how old I am. Put a dime in a damn right. uh, 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 pay phone or yeah. whatever it was to call somebody to come pick you. Don't ever just be out there thinking, oh, I'm completely taken care of. Now, nah, God bless the child that's got his own. Yeah. And so we're not teaching our girls common sense. Yeah. Why in the hell would you go lie up in a strange, I don't care if he was green like a Martian. Why mm -hmm. would you go lie up in a strange man's house and, and, and then just think everything's okay? Hell, you can't even walk through the parking lot of Macy's nowadays without having your head on swivel. Yeah, well, you know, uh, remember when uh, we were younger and uh, even if you went to the all-nighters at the base, you girls used to come in packs. Y'all used packs. to date together. Y'all used packs. to date together. You know, that way, you know, you know, if one, you know, caught something, you know, you all went together, went to Denny's afterwards. It was like a group thing. It was, you know, if I just met somebody, you know, I'm a man, it's a little different, but I just remember, you know, you young ladies back in the day, if I met you, then your girlfriend's right there and y'all came together. So there's no way, even if you were coming back to my house or my dorm or whatever, your girlfriend's coming too with her dude or whatever she met. And you can best believe if that ever happened, one of us had a box cutter, boo boo. <laughs> I'm right. just saying, you know, right? <laughs> right. Wild loose up in there, mm -hmm. right? But exactly. To exactly. your point, what happened to the good girlfriends that you say, "Hey, girl, I met Brad, and you know he cute." Yeah, I want you to go with stuff. me. Well, what, but what happened to the girl? I said, girl, you better sit your ass down. You got four kids already. You don't know that man from a can of paint. What happened mm -hmm. to those girlfriends? Right, right. But then again. You know, hey, uh, uncle, could, 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 could you watch my kids? Oh, okay. Well, how long are you going to be gone? Where are you going? Well, don't worry about that. Well, then you better take these kids with you. Right, exactly. Take exactly. them to meet their new potential stepdaddy or whoever you propose. It's stepdaddy season, right? right? You know, but that, but I, I just, and you know, the, the crazy thing is, it's not really crazy. It's actually ingenious. I was listening to Ricky Smiley, and I don't know the gentleman he was talking to, and I sent you. Yeah, um, the video because it was sent to me mm -hmm. and it was about a 27 minute conversation of them just really just freestyling and talking about how this younger generation can't take correction it can't what i was what, what me and you were talking about years ago yeah can't take advice and you know and and talking about how the mamas want to pacify the boys and they basically raising boys that they wouldn't want to date mm -hmm. and you know all of that kind of stuff you know and Talking about, you know, how sorry a lot of these men are that they got to be told to do this. I mean, it was just a great conversation. Yeah. And so that kind of just reminds me of what we're talking about. It's like people cannot take advice. Like I, I would just want to believe that there was somebody in Asia, because that's Asia, mm -hmm. Asia's life that said, baby, are you, the, girl, you got folded with what like the seven color purple a woman with chilling shouldn't be you know, on the juke joint that's that shouldn't even be a thing right you right. got four babies girl the last thing you need is to be going and find something new you need to sit sit at home and deal with what you got yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like okay i'm not saying your life is over but when you have like a bunch of children you kind of canceled any opportunity to be like the single girl Let's out just there keep it all the way real yeah. honey Let's keep it all the way real when you 29 with four kids, you got other stuff to be doing. 
Right. And clearly the daddy well, dad, who I, I'm just going to say daddy because I don't know if there was multiple dads, but clearly the daddy was not in their life unless she was creeping on him because mm-hmm. you out there with Brad or Isaiah, I should say. His name is mm-hmm. Isaiah Crown, but you mm-hmm. out there with Isaiah. And so some people will get mad and say, well, she should, that don't mean she shouldn't be able to date. I'm telling you as I have a child of 21 and the last thing that I was trying to do was be out there with a whole bunch of dudes. I was my daughter's mother. She came first, and I was not going to put myself or her in a situation to be harmed by anybody. I was not going to have somebody have to explain to my daughter when your mama was out there because she was hot in the pants, and she ain't coming back. And yeah. probably why I didn't want her to be living with her daddy. I'm just playing. I'm <laughs> yeah. just, well, well, you know, well, you know, and, and it's funny that she's, it's funny that, that that you say that because when you did start having, when you did have your daughter and stuff, the base nightclub has never been the same. Nah, I mean, <laughs> no. that stuff stops. And yeah. that, 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 I'm telling y'all, this is, this is like really my pet peeve. My pet peeve is, and I'm speaking to the moms because I can't speak to the dads, but I'm speaking to mm-hmm. the moms. What in the ugly heck? Because I wanted to say the F word, but I'm a lady. Mm-hmm. What is me time? Like, I get me time, like, okay, this little badass little girl, she sleep. It's a me time. Maybe I'll take mm-hmm. a nap. Maybe I'll, you know, paint my nails, whatever. Me time. But did my light go out? No, no, you're fine. Uh, a, but, the, but the me time, these, 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 these girls, these women, these mamas are talking about, I need to go off on vacation with my home girls for a week and two weeks. And I need to be, no, you lie down. And have those those the child or the children, and you don't get that kind of me time. And then this, ooh, I could go on forever. This is the part that really make me mad. They be mad because you don't want to watch the kids. Yeah, it's like yeah. I need a break. Did I have you got one when you was breaking <laughs> headboards? That's when you got a break, okay? But I didn't make the kids. Right. You made the kids. All right. Right. I, I'm a grand. I'm not a grandma yet, but if I was, my child knows I'm a grandmama for recreation, not an obligation. Right, right. You know, I'm not going to obligate me to watch no kids. I'm gonna watch them because I want to watch them. Right, yeah, and, and and I get that a lot. It's I, I, I'm not a grandfather to tell my knowledge, and I, you know, I, I tell people all the time I'm not obligated to deal with any of these kids because, again, as a man, you got to remember I'm a man. When I started having my children. And I, I had to go get it. I had, I mean, I couldn't be in the, you didn't, you couldn't find me in the clubs anymore. I mean, it was just like, I would love to have done it and, you know, and had a nice run, but, you know, I had a good run as a young man, you know, I uh, had a, a go for a baby. You had a go for a baby. Um, and then, you know, life started happening for me. And it was like, by the time I actually went back to a club just to kind of see what it was, it was about, it was a totally different vibe. It was like, it had already passed me by. You know, yeah, and your mind frame, you're not there no more. It's like, OK, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm I like I'm really a grown up now. Right. Like yeah. I got grown up responsibilities. I got a child. I got miles to feed. And yeah. I don't like the last thing I need to do is be off in the club, shaking my money maker and spending money that I need for my child up in the right. club. Right. And, and I'm not talking about like I went back to the club when my child was 15. I'm talking about I went back to the club like when I was the child was maybe two or three. And I was like, well, you know, I got things I got to do. I can't be wasting time. I'm tired. I'm working two jobs. Uh, you like know, I'm you said, gonna, the, the thrill was gone. It's yeah, like, it was gone. A lot of the, the, the same women in, in my age group there, they started having their children and everybody was gone. It was just a new vibe type type situation. So I look at a lot of these girls and I say, how do they have time to go to clubs? And then, you know, we have this mindset now, especially with our young girls. And I, like I said, I, I don't think necessarily it's taught in the home. But Demetra, when we were coming up, and I know things have changed, but when did a striving to be a, I heard a young lady tell me this. She admires Cardi B because Cardi B came out of the strip club to become a very successful entertainer. How many Cardi B's are there that can actually do that? And you got a lot of girls out here that think that that's the way to go if they want to be in entertainment, whatever. And then you got girls that now will go on OnlyFans because they don't want to get a regular job. And I'm all, you know, you know, do, do what you want to do as long as, you know, it's, you know, in good taste or whatever. Cause remember the internet's forever. So if you're going to go out there and bust it wide open, be prepared for that. 
but you have a lot of these young girls that are just putting themselves in danger, be it if not on a Brad, uh, escorting uh, my fans. And it ain't just black girls. It's uh, it's other girls, too. It's like a total different uh, mindset when it comes to these uh, younger people. You know, I'm, of course, technology, like we talked about for years, AI is going to wipe out a lot of jobs, you know, but ladies, what do you do? when the body and gravity starts taking over, what is your backup plan? And and just like that Bill Moyers thing, we're seeing a lot of women who didn't have a backup plan. I have friends now whose mothers, you know, got caught up in the drug and the crack epidemic and stuff, and they won't even let their, uh, there's a, uh, I saw it the other day, it's on YouTube. It's Atlanta Speaks or something where this guy interviews homeless black Atlanta homeless people. And a lot of the women were in abusive relationships, got caught on drugs. They were uh, molested at a young age. I mean, the story is constantly the same and they're on the streets to this very day. Now you got to think about mama in the nineties who was in the strip club doing that thing or whatever she was doing, popping that thing, whatever. Now let's talk about the girls right now that are on OnlyFans doing that thing, living paycheck to paycheck because you're not putting anything away. What are you going to do when you get my age? Where's your social security? Where you know what's going to happen there if you even make it to that far? Well, I just think too, yeah. So that, I mean, that's a good question to ask. I mean, that lifestyle is very fleeting. Yeah. You know, a lot of r- rarely do people make it. Like you said, to the Cardi B statuses yeah. or your Jenna Jamesons or mm-hmm. you know, any I mean, of Jenna those- Jameson is jacked up right now. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're- but yeah, I'm saying, but she was able yeah. to flip hers into an empire. You right. know, right. So, but that's rare. Most of them, you know, end up on you know some other stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think me and you both know people who are wearing that lifestyle and it didn't sure. work the way they thought it was. Maybe, you know, kind of didn't end up good for them. But I mean, I just think it's it's important, especially us as black people, to stick together. together. Like mm-hmm. a lot, like I, I'm always gonna go back to the basis of what's wrong with us, other than you know, us being charted over here on slave ships and being conditioned and you know, brainwashed and all of that is that we don't teach our children anymore. And I always say this, y'all gonna always hear me say this, especially now, a lot of these kids are just doomed. Doomed due to the, and, and, and parenting is not what it used to be, cell phones and these damn tablets. Mm-hmm. Like you could, like these parents are so freaking lazy where you don't teach your kids because you're so busy scrolling on your phone and, you know, you got to keep up with all the latest. You on the shade room. TikTok, you're doing a TikTok all video. That kind of I, I've never seen with, with, with the black community in the dire straits that we are right now. We are in dire straits, and people don't want to believe that we've lost a third of our wealth in 2008. They came. The, a pandemic made a lot of black people go unemployed. The gentrification going on in major cities. Black people are in dire straits, and I look at these TikTok videos. I've never seen so many people just dancing like fools knowing that they're not preparing themselves for you know what's coming down the pipe well because a lot of people you know are trying to get discovered or go viral and have that moment and again a lot of people don't realize social media fame is it is like a a, a luck of the draw it really kind of it just really is right if you're hot you're hot and you might strike if people like you and it's 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 really a gamble um but yeah for the most part i mean people do need to think of other things to do but we have to get back to the point of teaching like our grandmamas and our mamas and our daddies and our grandparents used to do. Get back to really teaching from the cradle. It doesn't start when a kid is wayward and it doesn't want to listen and is out there doing this thing. It starts from the cradle and you start imposing expectation on those children yeah. of what you expect for them to do. And you follow through, put your damn phone down, get them off the tablet. Because I remember... When I was coming up, we didn't obviously didn't have phones, cell phones. We had the phone. Yeah, we did. We had that cord. big brick. Yeah. Well, we had the long with the phone cord, you know, yeah. and, you know, all of that. But I remember having <laughs> I remember having to read. I remember having to do book reports. Yeah. I remember having to be productive. And unfortunately, a lot of you parents out there, man, I ain't talking to y'all that watch, I'm talking to the ones mm-hmm. over there. A lot of you parents out there just really believe that you're parenting your child by putting them in front of something that all day long, keeping a child from bothering you. Listen, I'm not going to lie. 
as a parent, I was a young parent. I was, you know, like, damn, I wish I sometimes I could just have my time to myself. But I was like, but yeah, it ain't her fault. So be her parent. You, all you were going to do is read a book. God. <laughs> but I didn't, I even, like my daughter's 29, they have tablets and all of that. Mm. She, we didn't even have a TV in my house for a very long time. We would listen to the yeah. radio and we did other stuff, which is why my daughter's like this big music head and she likes all genres of music because that's what we did. I mean, I maybe I should go to you know CPS for this, but you know, Curtis Mayfield, uh, uh, uh Superfly was one of her favorite albums. Kids. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she was a kid. She I'm, like, your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm your oh I'm yeah, your she just heard all that when she was like four years old. <laughs> you know, she had a long mouth pack. But anyway, that may probably makes me a piss poor parent to some degree. But the point that I'm making is. I spent time with her. We didn't watch TV. You know, I've got her involved in sports and dance and different programs. So I guess if I could appeal to parents out there, spend some time with your children. I mean, you, they, they'll be better people for it. It will be better people yeah, for see, it. Yeah, see, see to me. But what I'm saying is, I get tired of going to restaurants and then, because eh, 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 the, the child can't behave. And then you got to slap a cell phone or something in front of his face for it to behave. It's like, yeah. just don't bring them if they can't behave. Right. But, you know, but Dimitri, you got, you got to tell the whole story. Not only did, did you uh, work, in addition, you still found time to parent your child. Yeah, I mean, I had three jobs. At yeah, and I don't understand time. how women who might be on the system or might only have one child, they they can't handle it. And they've got one, you know, or you know, and they're not like they're going to a job. They're they're sitting at home getting, you know, aid or whatever. To not be selfish yeah. to be a parent. I'm not saying that you don't do self care and all of that. That's important so you can maintain. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Don't think I'm not saying that. You like I'm not saying to run yourself ragged, mm -hmm. but you cannot be selfish and be a parent too. They do not mix well at all. And somebody's going to get the short end of the stick. And it's more than likely the children. And you got to remember, you're raising the children that will grow up and go out into society and be a productive citizen or be a goddamn nuisance. So and society will take care of that. Exactly. And so, you know, just kind of making it, bringing it back around to Asia again. I don't want anybody to think that we are shaming her. I do not know no. this young lady's situation, what her deal was with the kids and all of that. But I just think that we would be remiss if we didn't bring it up and say, like, you know, what is a, a woman with four kids at the young age of 29 out there gallivanting? That's some old word right there. Yeah, gallivanting mm -hmm. with, a, with a strange guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, those, that needs to really be examined. And the other mm -hmm. thing, back to the original point of a lot of these divesters talking about Brad is a better choice. Is he really? Mm -hmm. Is he really, especially, is, is he a better choice, especially if he does something foul to you and he gets away with it? Like, he, like yeah. where is this dude? Is he out at, you know, with, with his next date? Well, mm -hmm. we're like, he's just out there. And Vandersloot, yeah, you know, like a Vandersloot, walking around, waiting to kill yeah. the next victim. And Asia's funeral is coming up and he's out there doing what? Right. And and then and then here's another question. If, even if you are doing that, we, we've said this for years, Demetra. Do you have insurance for that loved one that just got killed unexpectedly? Not that you're, it's, it's a money making thing, but 70 percent of all white wealth comes out of insurance. But uh, there was a good point also, because we, because when we're talking about Asia making bad decisions, Demetra, you know, and I know brothers that have divested and it's been a nightmare for them. Bruh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bruh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're not just coming down on the ladies. There have been brothers. I don't know a dude right now that didn't divest and didn't regret it. Let me tell y'all a story, okay? <laughs> I ain't going to say his name. But I talked to a brother. Smoke. Who, uh, <laughs> no, I, now, that's your brother. I ain't <laughs> smoke. I ain't had nothing to do with none of that. <laughs> no, go ahead. I talked to a brother who said, and he, you know, dates everything but a black woman, but he said his next woman will be black. But he says this. He says, Brothers talk a lot of stuff about black women. He says, yeah, black women do a lot of stuff. But he says, when they done with you, they done with you. Like, okay, I'm good, whatever, whatever. Even if they do take you through the stuff for a minute, they done with you. He said, but a white woman will hook her, his, her hooks into you and never let go. And grind those bones. So there's right. Nothing. Never let go. You heard me. Oh, oh, 
Well, you, yeah. you know, I have you all up at the child support office and they, you know, it's just doing a lot. So and this the was kids a are grown and she's still going back and trying to get the money. This she's was a still brother making up stuff. Who was, I yeah. guess you guys could say it was a divester. He was like, mm -hmm. uh-uh. He said, black Never women, again. they get crazy, but they leave you alone eventually. But the white women, uh-uh. Yeah. And, and and then with the sister, you know what you're getting. And, uh, you know, and, and just before we, we get ready, well, we got some time still. Ladies, here's another thing that when you were talking about the Ricky Smiley thing, when, when I watched that. Ricky Smiley hit on something that actually happened to me with my youngest son. Ladies, please, your baby daddies, whatever, if that father is doing something that you do not agree with in regards to how he's disciplining the child or how he's talking to the child, walk away. I remember when I was getting in my son's ass about something and his mother, I looked at his mom and she wanted to jump in but she knew better. You know what I mean? Not that I was going to jump on her, but you know what I mean? It was like, I, you know, I, she, she, I told her, walk away, walk away. Because if he doesn't understand as a man, what I'm teaching him, what society ain't going to have no excuse when you get out there and society gets a hold of you. And then, you know, we're getting a call that you're locked up, whatever. There are certain things men have to communicate to their sons, even their daughters, that you might not necessarily agree with because you're coming at it from a woman's perspective because you guys are a woman mindset but there are certain programs Demetra is a prime example and I, I kind of smile every time Demetra brings it up Demetra I am very sure a lot of your personality comes from your mother but I see a lot of your personality that you got from your father oh yeah yeah my, and, my dad and the wisdom me, he instilled into you my dad tells me all the time he says out of all my children you only got four <laughs> five one is deceased yeah. um out of all my children you are the one that is most like me mm -hmm. in every way you know um thinking wise speaking right. and you know mm -hmm. fearless and he says you are the you you he says you are like my sponge mm -hmm. you know and and if y'all saw my mom and and listen to my mom i get that all the time you sound just like your mom oh you look just like your mom but yeah, my dad was very influential. It still is influential yeah. in you know in my life. So yeah, that right. dads are important. Right, they're, they're they're definitely important. And like I said, sometimes when that man is spending time with that child, be it a male or a female, and you might not agree with what he's saying, ladies, you're not a man, so you don't understand what he's trying to instill. Uh, Demetra, I'm very sure your dad told you how you should be treated by a man, and how you should treat a man. Oh, absolutely, and I, and I learned that <laughs> from my mom as well. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, which is why I don't understand a lot of these women running around talking crazy to men. It's like, I would just say this to y'all, okay? I, if y'all made it this far. <laughs> I'm not saying men don't get on our nerves because they do, trust me. They get on our nerves. Vice you know? versa. Vice versa. Yeah, I just think we need to find a Kitchen of the man. bedroom. That's how we want. Kitchen of the bedroom. Right. Or the rooftop, if y'all believe in the Bible. <laughs> tell you, go to the rooftop if a woman is nagging you, right? But it also says, and I don't go to church, nor do I really follow the Bible, but I know it says a woman that, you know, is nagging is like a dripping faucet, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's annoying. And so as women, I would just say we need to find a better way to communicate. You don't need to undress that man verbally. You woo, 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 you be a N word and this, that, and the other. Because one thing I would tell y'all is this, and I'm not a man, but I can kind of ascertain this. That if a man, and, I'm, and I say that from a woman's point of view, if a man feels like he is with his mom, he's not going to be attracted to you. Thank you. Because right, that's you. something, you know, a mama would do. Yeah, a man doesn't want to be raised again. And not only that, he, he don't want to feel like he's jumping in the bed with his mama. mama. Mm -hmm. Just exactly. like for me personally, I wouldn't want to be with no man who was doing that to me. I'm like, dude, you sound like me. Even my dad don't even do all that. But damn, you sounded kind of patriarchal here. And I'm just not turned on by that. Yeah. You, you know, I always would, would tell the women I'm dating, um, especially when it comes to my children. I don't mind. I love a strong woman for my children. Not for me. <laughs> not no, for I me. Mean, for my children. And to your point, it's really about knowing when to dial it back. Mm -hmm. You cannot raise that man. And the crazy part about it is I see a lot of women, you don't even talk to your children the way you talking to your man. Mm, that's a good point. 
Good point. You talking to this man like he and listen, some of y'all men don't have no sense now. Y'all don't. Y'all let y'all off your rocker. However, that does not mean that y'all don't deserve to be talked to kindly and vice versa. You know, right. right. We should we but and y'all know I'm big on communication, it's part of my thing. We should mm -hmm. just learn how to communicate with each other. I mean, have you ever been in a screaming match with somebody? Oh, yeah. Ever, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Nothing gets resolved. What, yeah, did you hear what the other person said? And they probably didn't hear what you said because I want to make sure you don't get to say what I want to say, and I'm gonna say and it just becomes noise. Yeah, so we gotta yeah. get the habit of listening to each other, and that's the problem. I say this all the time. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We're supposed to listen more, right? More than we talk, right? Because I got to a point when it comes to the modern woman, when I saw the modern woman uh coming out in the 90s, um, I just turned off and I would walk away. And ladies, the biggest mistake you can do like a yipping dog, yipping at somebody's heel, is to follow a man when he walked away from you. Well, and the other thing, too, is you said during the 90s, but when uh, her name slips my mind, so forgive me, she says you got to have a J-O-B to get with me. Gwen Guthrie. Gwen Guthrie. People got mad. What you mean? Oh, she trying, she a gold digger. She mm -hmm. trying to, but it's like, nah, she was really keeping it real, right? Like, you, you, can't, sense. you can't just be out in these streets with no job and trying to get with me. As my daddy always yeah. say, no romance without the finance. It's a nuisance. Yeah, and we need to teach our men and our, our young men and our young women that like, if you as a woman is looking for a dude, you know, to take care of you and get the bag and all of that, what are you doing to earn that bag? You can't, you, ha you having some a little hole down there and you know, a big fat booty and, and, and whatever, that you got to bring do more than that because eventually that will fade, the booty will drop, and the yeah. rock will dry up, and yeah. all of that. And then what does that man get after all of that is done? And I'm not saying, because I, 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 I can always, almost hear somebody saying, well, you know, he need to, I'm talking about a man who's doing what he's supposed to be doing. I ain't yeah. talking about them busters and dusters that y'all used to date. And I'm talking yeah. about a man that's doing what he's supposed to do. You eventually have to answer that question as a woman. If you are seeking a man to take care of you, what am I going to do to earn my keep per se? You, you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I looked at Facebook and, you know, all these different social media things. And I see these young girls, even some older women, and they're smoking their dope, you know, their weed, they're drinking, they're uh, dressed a certain way and whatever. deals. And I'm thinking... Who, ladies, if you're in the strip club, okay, and you're a bad bitch, right? Excuse my language if you don't like that, but you're a bad B, right? Uh, you know, you get all the money, you go to the VIP, VIP club, you're in the VIP room, whatever. Do you really think a, 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 a guy is going to wife you? I mean, a normal guy. Well, I was going to say, be careful, brother. Because there's a lot of men out there who like all of that. And listen, no, 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 they, yeah. they are. But, but the longevity of that person, okay, so like I'm seeing these girls on social media doing all that stuff, right? And let's say, you know, th that's with you forever. If you've been in the club and, you, and you're known as Kiki, the chick that was in the club, now you're 60. I mean, we have friends. And, you know, maybe that were older than us back in the day. And there were some bad chicks and there were some bad dudes. Where did Ray Ray end up? Jail. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want a quality man, you got to be a quality yeah, woman. And vice versa. That was my point. Yeah, right. Vice versa. You want a quality yeah. a woman, you got to be a quality man. I mean, right. you can't. Listen, I always say water seeks its own level and so do people. Right. Whether you realize it or not, you know, and so you, you just got to be what you're seeking to some degree. And I think. From uh, for those of us who were from raised from the old school, like I always tell y'all, my mom didn't work. I, you know, my mom was a stay at home mom all the way up till I was eighteen. You know, mm -hmm. but she she had to play her role, and yes, I am emphasizing role because that's what men and women did. They had roles that the man did this, and in my family's case, my dad worked, brought home the bacon, and my mom stayed home. They didn't eat bacon because they was Muslim. I'm mm -hmm. just using that as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. My mom fried it up and took care of the kids and served it, yeah. the household. She made sure that my dad was straight. And in turn, he made sure she was straight. It was mm -hmm. a give and take. See, see, but see, you brought that up though. But that type of lifestyle now is to a lot of these young girls, that's weak. Oh, that, oh no, I, I, 
I, I can't be no house. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's like it's almost a negative now to say you are a housewife. Or to well, say, a man worth his weight ain't going to be with no woman. That's why I keep telling y'all mm-hmm. who say y'all don't want a modern woman to stop entertaining modern women. And for the women, mm-hmm. you don't want a simp or a beta male or a mm-hmm. man who ain't, can't keep a job or a man who can't lead. Stop entertaining those men. Entertain the man that you want and be, be that woman that that said man will say, you know what? Shit, let's stop looking. Let's stop looking and we're going to do what we got to do, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. But anyway, RIP to uh, Asia. Yeah. Real, uh, real quick, what, what do you think the outcome of Asia's situation is going to be? Or do, do you think that they were going to open up the case and uh, pursue it in regards to has Ben Crump landed on the ground? Or? I've seen him talk about it. So perhaps he is going to get involved. And I should say, if I didn't say in the beginning, it just happened in Kansas City, Missouri. So um, mm-hmm. seems like if Missouri is maybe a red state, I don't know what that is, what the deal is. But if I had to guess, I'm going to say unless there's some pressure put on there, because unfortunately with black women and I, you know, and I hate to say this, but it's just true. Black women, they go, go through this kind of stuff like in Breonna Taylor's, not that she was on a date, but she was murdered by right. the police. Um, it gets a lot of buzz for a minute. And then it goes, Shoo. And then the I next one it. happens. Yeah, have you noticed that that we've been desensitized by all these murders, the George Floyd but thing? Even, but see, because it's a black woman, right? Yeah. Black women is kind of like, oh, then it goes away. But like, we heard about that, uh, uh, I can't think of the white woman's name, that came up missing and her boyfriend ended up oh, yeah, a yeah. Mm-hmm. couple mm-hmm. months ago. Everybody in their mama from all the way up to Mars was concerned about what happened to this white girl. Bounty hunters came down. All everybody, that. everybody. And then they found out, you know, you know, she was more than likely killed by him. Mm-hmm. The point that I'm making is you got to be a white woman to get some results. And so because black women, we know that we're not terribly important in the larger scheme of things, especially when it comes to white men harming us. Maybe you need to think about sitting at home and, you know, watching an episode of Golden Girls until we figure this shit out between yeah. us black men and, and, and women. Because at yeah. the end of the day, we need, need each, each other, other, right? Mm-hmm. We need each other. So anyway, y'all, RIP to Asia uh, Maynard. Hopefully uh, her family does get some justice. You know, she's got four mm-hmm. babies that are, don't have a mother now. So very, very sad and heartbreaking for them because they don't have to hear the story about what happened to the mom. And so Again, hopefully she gets justice, y'all. So anyway, we're going to get out of here. We do have a cash app, PayPal, and Venmo. If you want to help support this channel, we greatly appreciate it. Become a member um, and all of that. And we will see you guys. Um, our next podcast will be Saturday, this coming Saturday. And I don't know what we'll talk about. If y'all have any suggestions, please let us know. Thank you, Donovan, so much for being here. And we will talk to y'all later.